In this video, I will be checking the MSI 4080 Super Gaming X Slim version. I will start with the unboxing and show you what we have in the box, then move to the performance of the card compared to the budget offering from Gigabyte, the WinForce model that I checked previously, move on to overclocking, analyze the overall performance, check the terminals of the card and finalize with the undervolting capabilities. At the end, I will share my impression and compare it to the other 4080 Super that I tested, the Gigabyte 4080 Super WinForce V1. In the box we have a support bracket, the usual new power adapter that all mid to high power 40 series cars use and the card itself. Oh and we have the paper for the installation. The usual stuff. To be honest I'm not big on big flashy multicolor GPUs and to me this sleek minimalistic design looks really good. Now, I'm not sure if this replaces the gaming trio line, but the design looks similar and although the name implies that this is a slim card, it's only slim in MSI's 4080 Super models, as you will find slimmer models from other vendors. Also, the price is not of an entry level model. Looking at the spec sheet, we can see that this model has a mild overclock over the base models of 17 MHz, but when we compare it to the entry level model from Gigabyte, we will see that actually the game clock differs difference is smaller. The upcoming side-by-side -side comparison will be against the Gigabyte 48 Super Winforce V1 at 4K and 1440p. Make sure to check the game settings to see exactly what is the resolution used for the comparison. Taking a detour. When it comes to overclocking, I tried plus 260 MHz for the core and 1280 MHz for the memory over the default settings and, no surprise, as you'll see soon, these settings didn't work. It crashed at the beginning of the bench, meaning that the settings are too aggressive. When this happens, it means that I need to lower the clock speed to a value bigger than 10 MHz. After more testing, I found that the following work for this model. Check the side-by-side -side comparison between the default and overclocked setting and also the overclocked WinForce 4080 Super.
Looking at the comparison chart, we can see that overclocking the GPU adds a small performance bump as the default setting for the 4080 Super Gaming X Slim in red is trailing the cheaper overclocked Gigabyte WinForce 4080 Super in orange as well. The green bar, which represents the featured model in this video, leads as it's able to hold a higher frequency while gaming as seen in the side-by-side -side comparison and not because it has a higher power ceiling. The 4080 Super is, in most cases, voltage limited, not power limited. Now you can better see the performance improvement for the MSI model brought by overclocking it. It's not huge, but it's a few percentages here and there at the expense of increased power consumption. Bear in mind that not every GPU will bring the same performance benefit, even though it's the same model. For the model in hand, the performance increase from the base model is almost 7%, which, to be honest, is a good value. I was able to push this model to over 2950 MHz core speed which represents a good value even for a premium model, at least compared to what I saw over the internet. Let's analyze a bit the thermals while stress testing using Fermark. These are the 10 minute run logged using Hardware Info 64. The red line represents the overclocked profile and the green one is the default one. When overclocking and increasing the power limit, we can see in the top left graph that the core temperature increases by around 5 degrees. In the top right corner we see the fan spinning at around 2400 RPM, an increase of around 500 and this makes the fans noisy, emitting a high pitch sound. The power consumption is displayed in the bottom left graph while the hotspot values in the bottom right. The MSI model has a good cooler as the hotspot sits below 85 degrees at an ambient temperature of around 23 degrees Celsius. When comparing this model to the WinForce V1 in green, we can see that the hotspot value is 10 degrees lower as seen in the top left graph while the fan speed check the top right graph is lower. The WinForce model has better fans as this produces less noise and all you can hear is air moving. As this is focused on stress testing the GPU core, the memory sits at idle and we can see in the bottom left graph an almost 3 degrees advantage for the MSI model for the memory junction temperature. Now to the disappointing part of the video, under voltage. This is why it took me this much time to make this video as I was not able to find a good undervolt value for this GPU. As I'm showing on the screen, this is one of the many attempts I made. The GPU is unable to maintain the same speed achieved with the overclock when attempting to reduce the core voltage. What you see on the screen now, 2940 MHz at 1.04 was stable, but unfortunately the GPU can't maintain the same core frequency as when not undervolted as you can see now in the side-by-side -side comparison. Simply put, when attempting to undervolt, the MSI model behaves exactly the same as the Gigabyte Queen Force 4080 Super model prior tested, meaning it sits at the same speed and voltage value. I'm a bit disappointed to be honest. Let me know in the comments below what value did you manage to achieve when undervolting. To conclude, I like the MSI 4080 Super Gaming X Slim as it is one of the thinner 4080 Super models, a compact one by today's standards, alongside the WinForce model from Gigabyte. It has a discreet, sleek design, it's not a premium model but feels a bit like one. The card comes with minor overclock over the reference models from the get-go. I'm happy to report that it has good cooling, a dual BIOS, has more premium offerings and it has RGB as it can be seen on the screen right now. The power connector though I feel that the Gigabyte had the best approach with its WinForce series as this is not putting a pressure on the power connector in tight spaces. This model is not the cheapest from the MSI, I believe it's not a direct competitor to the WinForce model from Gigabyte that will be the Ventus series. If you liked the video or found it helpful click the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Take care and hope to see you in the next one.